Hey, hey, Shagheads. Curtis Tucker here with a Shaggy Life podcast. Tonight's episode is going to be wild and wooly. It's going to be a doozy. If you guys uh, are listening to the podcast on one of your favorite uh, apps or platforms, be sure and go over to youtube.com and check out the uh, Curtis Tucker podcast channel and you can see a video version of the podcast and tonight uh, the video version is a little bit different because I'm actually standing up and walking back and forth while I am doing the podcast episode and you might ask why real quick and the answer is uh, I am in the middle of a step contest, a challenge for May uh, to see who can get the most steps. And so I figured if I'm going to be recording for uh, 45 minutes to an hour, I might as well get some steps in while I'm doing that. So I will probably on next week's episode, I will go into depth on this step challenge and give you guys some more information about that. So anyway, so that's why uh, if the audio sounds a little weird, Or if you're wondering, why is he walking back and forth in the video? That's why. Maybe I'll I'll walk forward and backward or just trying to get some extra steps in. Uh, Right now, uh, I think I'm at 29,000 steps for today. So uh, this has actually turned out to be a challenge. So we'll see how many I get to after this. But anyway, so um, I teased some of you um, on... The uh, 70s Buzz podcast and the Buzzhead Radio podcast that uh, we had uh, big, the Tucker family had big news and uh, asked you guys to come over here and listen to this podcast. And so I am going to explain what all the big news is. There's some big changes uh, happening to the Tucker family. And I thought I would combine that news with... um, kind of what it's like to be in a dance family and to be a dance dad. So tonight's episode is Confessions of a Dance Dad. And so this is actually a blog post. And so you can go to curtistucker.com and you can read the blog post there. And so that's kind of going to be my outline that I'm going to use to do this podcast. And so it's going to be in a little bit different format than me just kind of rambling because the way that I wrote it, um, there's kind of a, a comment, a question or a statement. And then below that, there's a kind of a description or more detail on what that question or that statement means. And then below that is a confession by me being a dance dad, kind of explaining how I feel about that statement and that information. And so, and then I think I've got like 24 of those. So if you don't know anything about being uh, in a dance family, this may be kind of a fun eye-opening episode for you guys, but uh, this is kind of uh, tonight's episode. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I'm waving at you. Uh, Don't forget, you guys uh, can also listen to these on your favorite uh, podcasting apps. And please, you guys, uh, subscribe to both um, my YouTube channel and my podcast, and then you guys will get notified when I come out with these goofy new episodes. And so I am going to uh, get started. I'm trying to, if you guys are watching on the video, you guys can see that I've got my, I'm having to use my iPad to follow along with my blog post. And then I've got, um, to make the sound better, um, these Rode wireless mics, they sound better when I use the handheld microphone rather than pinning one of the uh, microphones to my shirt. So I've, my hands are full. And um, so you'll have to go, if you're not watching, you'll have to go watch. And I have no idea what this looks like, me walking back and forth. It probably looks a little weird, but uh, here we go. Um, Okay, so um, as of, let's see, it was uh, Sunday, April 21st, just a couple of, what, two weeks ago or so, um, I became or I basically lost my status as a dance dad. Um, I've been a dance dad of two collegiate uh, college palm girls for three, four, actually four years now. 
and um, almost two decades of watching them dance in studio dance, middle school dance, uh, or palm, middle school, high school palm, and all that. And um, I mean, basically, in an instant, and I didn't know that it was going to end on Sunday for either girl. And so I thought I had um, some dances and some palm uh, events left for both of the girls. But on Sunday, April 21st, it ended for both of my girls. And both of those ended with phone calls from Piper. And so this is uh, the story of what happened that day and what's going on. And so... um, Follow along, and here's the story. And to make this make sense, I'm going to start from the beginning, which gives you guys kind of an idea of what being a dance dad or living in a dance family is all about. And we were definitely, because we had two girls in dance, uh, and they were both uh, did really well, we were a dance family on steroids. And so uh, starting from the beginning, uh, this is kind of what I call number one, And it's basically, it'll be over in the blink of an eye. What do I mean by that? I mean that uh, that is not just a phrase. It is completely true that um, my dance dad life began, I think it was around 2007. Uh, My wife, Denise, enrolled our Crumb Crunchers in a fun dance class. At that time, I knew nothing about dance. I just thought this was kind of going to be a fun hobby that the girls were going to do. And uh, they would probably uh, move on to other things. And so this would not be any type of a big deal. But um, it did turn out that they liked dance. They stuck with it. I have loved every minute of it. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. We did not have to sit uh, at a windy soccer field or in a gymnasium for volleyball or any of that other stuff. Basically... Uh, We got to sit in auditoriums and listen to music with the lights down, and it was, uh, it's been great. So, almost like I said, almost two decades. Um, If you guys are wondering, if you guys are not a dance family and you have young girls and you're wondering what sport, and dance is a sport, so I will be calling it a sport, but if you're wondering what sport to get your girls into, I would highly recommend uh, Dance Life for your family. And uh, like I said, you get to sit in a air conditioned for you dance dads, you get to sit and this is my confession. um, You get to sit in an air conditioned auditorium, listen to some great music and for the most part, get to see a lot of um, very talented girls dance as opposed to being out on a windy field um, in the cold in the heat in the wind uh, being at, uh, even cheer is a little bit different cheer. You're basically, um, in a kind of a bigger venue with screaming parents. Um, when you're dealing with parents in, uh, basketball and softball and, uh, soccer, you've got uh, parents that are always screaming at the officials. And that is just not something that happens in dance. Dance is kind of low key, and it's uh, it's a great a great life. So I would highly recommend Dance Life. So number two on my list, uh, it's just dance. They'll grow out of it. So that was my thinking. My thinking was when Denise enrolled them in dance, it was probably just going to be a, uh, a one time deal. They were going to dance, put on tutus. Um, when we got them there, you know, they to get them prepared for dance, they gave them uh, hula hoops. So the girls just kind of twirled around and, um, you know, were having fun and giggling a lot and wearing tights. And I thought, well, that's, you know, fun. That's all fun and games. And that's it's not going to last. They're going to outgrow it. And so it's not going to be any big deal. And then all of a sudden, uh, after... Uh, they got kind of used to the dance moves and the spinning and all that. They uh, started spinning on one leg, and then they were jumping through the air. Then all of a sudden, they had the girls like uh, trying to bring one leg over their head uh, while standing on the other leg and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. And so before I knew it, uh, my girls did become... Uh, full-time dancers, and they loved it. I think there was one small little period where Piper uh, played soccer 
she didn't give up dance, but she played soccer. And then there was one period where Cheney wanted to sit out dance one year. And she, I think she regrets that, but she did sit out. But other than that, they, uh, our girls have always been dancers from almost the very beginning. And so, um, so we became dance, a dance family. Uh, my confession on this one is, um, how do you know when you become a dance dad? Well, I knew uh, the moment that I caught myself playing some of the songs that they were dancing to on the radio and also getting hooked on watching So You Think You Can Dance and Dance Moms. So if you know who Abby Lee is, you're probably a dance dad. Number three, where did my family go? So, like I say, this all started out as fun and games, and the girls would go, and uh, in the beginning, maybe once or twice a week for like 30 minutes or maybe an hour, they would have a class, and then they'd be home, and everything was normal, but um, as they got better, and we found out that both of them could dance, they uh, became involved in more and more dances, which took more and more hours, lots of practice. Like I said, this is a sport, and so the girls do put in a lot of time into dance. And um, so then uh, Denise would basically take them to practice, and she would kind of hang around, and then she would go get them something to eat, take it back to them, then she would hang out with the dance moms, and so basically, uh, as they really got involved, as they got a little bit older, uh, we just weren't seeing a whole lot of each other all the time because they were at dance. Denise was uh, with the dance moms waiting on them. And so I was here kind of hanging out. So uh, my confession on this one is I took that extra time. Uh, I basically told my buddy Todd, I was like, hey, nobody's home at my house on Tuesday nights. Why don't we uh, meet for dinner and start doing some podcasts? And so we did. And that led to uh, right now we are at seven years of doing uh, our podcast, the 70s Buzz podcast and Buzzhead Radio. So if you wonder where that all came about and why we uh, record those on Tuesday nights and why we go eat on Tuesday nights, that is because that was one of the nights every week that nobody was ever home at my house. And at that point, Todd didn't have anybody at his house. And so we decided um, we were just going to meet and start our own thing. Uh, number four, wait, I thought this was all fun and games, not a competition. Yeah, so when, uh, when dance started, it was just dance. It was like um, they just did these dances and uh, got selected for certain dances, maybe did a solo, and then at the end of the year, uh, they would have a recital, and, you know, it was uh, all fun and smiles and all that, and then all of a sudden, I started hearing this phrase, competitive dance, and so if you are not in the dance world, there is a big difference between studio dance and competitive dance. The studio dance is what I thought we were, which is just the girls uh, doing dances at the studio and and really not much other than that. Competitive dance is something that only the top dancers get to do because they have these things called tryouts. And during the tryout, they uh, girls have to perform and do certain things and remember uh, certain choreography. And the girls that do the best, depending on how many they want to have on the dance team, the competitive dance team, they have a certain number and any scores below that certain number, they don't make the team, but the girls with the higher scores, they make the competitive team. And so all of a sudden my girls went from being uh, just dance girls to competitive dance girls. And to get scored to become a competitive dancer, uh, they will uh, get some uh, non-biased, if you're a good coach, you get non-biased uh, judges to come and judge the girls. And those ju everything is subjective. That's uh, one thing that you're going to hear me say several times. But the scores can be based on dance moves, facial expressions, costume, music, attitude, and possibly phases of the moon. I don't know. You know, sometimes you just never know. Uh, and again, our girls, uh, both of them usually scored either at the top or towards the top uh, each year. And so they made competitive 
uh, dance every year that they tried out, which was, you know, all through grade school, middle school, and um, high school, and then um, when they first went to college. And so uh, my confession on this one is, once you become a dance dad, you go to as many competitions as you can. Uh, I did see that uh, there were some dads, that, and I don't know, I don't know what their circumstances were, but some dances did not show up. Um, it is a sport, and the girls put in as much effort as uh, a, a boy would on the football field, and it is a little bit heartbreaking when the girls look out there and they do not see their dads out there. I, I know there was some dads that only showed up for the recital. So if you're going to be a competitive uh, dance family, make sure dad is on board and he is going to want to come to the competitions. And I'm not saying that I made it to every competition, but I made it to uh, a high majority of competitions. And then there were some times where I would really just pop in, see the girls dance in their you know, their dances, and then I would leave and not hang out for the whole thing. So, um, so be aware that if you do competitive dance near your home studio, uh, you dance dads can do that. Number five, it costs how much? Yeah, that's one of those deals. Uh, once you become a dad of a competitive dancer, you just need to open the wallet, close your eyes, and never ask for the receipts or the costs, and never question the appearance of a mysterious credit card in your wife's name. Uh, competitive dance does cost money and it has to be paid for. And if your wife's not asking you for uh, lots of money, it's coming from somewhere else. And it has been rumored that dance moms get secret credit cards. So dad doesn't know how much dance is. Um, competitive dance teams require choreography which require a choreographer. The better your child dances, the more groups they are in. Each dance also requires its own different fancy costume. Those are not cheap. And then there's the entry fees into the competitions and additional time uh, for uh, personal dance uh, lessons to get them better. Competitive dance teams travel out of town. Uh, they go to regional competitions, and at the end of the season, they attend a national competition, usually out of state. So there is travel involved. If you've never been to Branson and you are a dance family, uh, you will probably at one point or another end up at Branson. It is famous for um, national dance competitions. The more dances your child makes, the more you're going to be required to be at a competition and so just get prepared for that. My confession on this one is competitive dance is not for the faint of heart, especially if you want your girls to get extra dance sessions to help them improve. Make a choice. Fancy new sports car or competitive dance. Uh, number six, those dance bags aren't going to fit. So... What you're going to find out is when your girls get into competitive dance and they are entered into a lot of dances. So our girls were in a lot of group dances and then they also had a lot of solos and different dances. And so, like I said, each one of those requires a costume, then there's makeup, then there's hair stuff, and there's just all kinds of stuff. Shoes, dance shoes, everything. And it's all got to fit inside of a bag and it really needs to fit inside of a bag where it's not going to get squashed, folded, or wrinkled. And so somebody came up with these huge, huge bags uh, that have uh, heavy-duty wheels on them, and when you set them down, you can uh, pop out this um, clothesline where you can hang up all of the costumes. And so it, these are kind of the go-to bags, and they are huge. They are literally so big that the girls can get inside of them, curl up, and uh, be hidden. And so um, having two dance girls, when you look at the bags, um, they will not fit in a regular-sized SUV. So if you are going to have uh, two girls 
dance, or if you're going to have one girl dance and you have a small car, uh, you are not going to be able to get them to the competition. So you're probably going to need to have one of the bigger SUVs to haul around two girls and their bags. And so uh, the confession on this one, have you been eating your Wheaties if you're a dance dad? Do you lift weights? Do you practice your squats? If so, you are ready to lift the dance bags into the back of the SUV. They are heavy and big. So um, don't worry about the cost. These bags are no more than a uh, really good golf bag uh, filled with a set of clubs. Yeah. So that's about, uh, I, and I had no idea what the dance bags cost, but I did look that up for uh, this uh, podcast and the blog post. And yeah, they run about the same as a golf bag with a set of clubs in them. So number seven, you said they were only going to be in four group dances. So what you're going to find out is girls that dance well will be in several dance groups. Uh, Be careful when they start throwing out words like solo, duo, trio. These new words are code for more dances above and beyond the studio group dances. Girls that do these extra dances require entire extra days for the competition. So usually what they do is they have solos like the Friday before the weekend competition. So sometimes your girls have to be taken out of school to go dance solo at some of these competitions. Confession, if you're going to drive hours to a dance competition, you might as well have your girl in as many dances as possible to make it worth the effort. Solos, duos, and trios are fun to watch because you can tell which girl on stage is your daughter, and you can also see how well they can dance. So don't complain about the solos, duos, and trios. Number eight, I can't tell which girl is my daughter. Yeah, so uh, once the girls get uh, all made up for a dance, they all start to look alike. They have the same makeup on, the same hair pulled back, um, the same costume. And if all of the girls or a lot of the girls are the same size, uh, once they get up there in a group or a large group, uh, it is kind of hard to find which daughter is your. Sometimes it takes two or three competitions before you ever figure out where they are, unless you have a really tall or a really short girl. Or fortunately for us, our girls uh, were usually on the front row, sometimes in the middle, and so they were a little easier to uh, find. Confession? Can't find your daughter on stage? Buy the video. Each uh, performance has a professional photographer and videographer there, and they will let you purchase. uh, They won't let you video in a competition, so uh, let you guys know that ahead of time. So don't be taking your fancy video equipment with you. You're not going to be able to use it, or they will kick you out of the competition. But you can buy a video, and once you get the video, you watch it. You find out where your daughter is in the dance, and then the next time you go to a competition, you will know where she is. Um, Again, we were blessed to have the girls, usually on the front row, so I didn't uh, buy the video, but I know the girls have uh, quite a few videos, especially from their their regular dance, um, like recitals and stuff. Number nine, nobody wants a gold medal. Yeah, think about that. So uh, the first time that the girls were at a competition and I heard that one of the other girls had won gold, I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty good. Uh, I didn't realize that she was that good. And the girls looked at me and laughed um, because dance awards are very confusing. And... uh, The girls quickly told me that there was only one thing worse than a gold medal or gold trophy uh, or gold award, and that would be silver. And so I thought, oh, really? And they said, yep, platinum is better than gold, but that's not the best, Dad. They said diamond trumps platinum. Well, so I'm thinking, okay, platinum's got to be, or diamonds have to be the best. Well, nope. Come to find out there is a double diamond, just like on the ski slope. So if you get a double diamond, that is the best. But the crazy thing about the Wacky Award system is that not all competitions use the same precious metal. So how do you figure out the scoring system? You buy the competition program. Oh, and another thing about dance competition, 
everyone wins a medal and a trophy. And so, uh, again, if you don't have the big SUV, you're not getting the big dance bags and all the trophies home. You literally, I, I, I know that uh, our girls won like a four or five foot trophy one time, and uh, we had to uh, send it in another vehicle. We did not have room for all of the luggage and the trophies. So beware and buy the big SUV. Confession, if Dance Dads were in charge, we'd have a Double Dog Dare You Kryptonite Award, and you'd get extra points based on how far you could belly slide across the stage. But, of course, we are not in charge. So um, there's your your metal stuff. Number 10, scoring is subjectively subjective. I mentioned this earlier. About the time you get the confusing awards somewhat figured out, you start to ask the girls how they get their scores to get these awards. Oh, that's a whole nother mess. Uh, scores have something to do with performance plus choreography times facial expression minus mess ups divided by difficulty added to look of the costume with a truckload of subjectivity thrown in. I think, not even sure. The exact same dances against the same exact studios at different competitions can score completely different. So um, it can be confusing and it can be very subjective. Uh, this is actually where some of the dance drama begins to creep in because uh, sometimes when you're in the audience, you know which performance was better than another, and sometimes that's not how the scores come out. Confession. If you're a dancer, you won't be able to please all of the judges all the time. This is for you girls out there. Uh, take your wins when you can and learn from the critiques when they come. Stay humble, smile, and plan your revenge for the next competition. Number 11, explain this to me like I'm a second grader. Dance craziness doesn't end with the medals and the scores. Once you think you know which awards go with which scores, you get hit with dance categories. Can you spot the difference between jazz, contemporary, hip-hop, lyrical, and the others? What about small group, large group, line, production, uh, what about divisions? Does your daughter dance in a group that's a beginner, intermediate, or advanced? Are the categories based on age? And so uh, you talk about trying to figure this out. It is crazy. I don't uh, think I ever figured it out because, and they don't go in order. So a beginning group, a beginning jazz group can actually perform right after a, um, a, uh, advanced um, lyrical group. And so sometimes you're scratching your head at the difference in the ability. Confession, uh, here's a dance mom pro tip, which uh, Denise usually did. Uh, she bought the program. So the dance moms usually buy the programs. Each dance competition should be selling the dance program and it will reveal all. Dance programs are also a great place to write down the scores and will give you a time schedule. Dance Dad Truth, I never bought the program. Where's the challenge in that? So I never knew when the dances were going on. I never knew what category the dance was. I never knew what level the dances were. I just was there to watch. Number 12, dance can be a time warp. Does your daughter have three minutes, uh, a three-minute dance at 10 a.m.? Great. That couldn't possibly take much time. You'll be in and out thinking to yourself within 15 minutes, right? Wrong. She'll need to be at the competition venue no later than two hours before her dance, even if it's a 90-second dance. And that's if they're not running ahead of schedule or it could be earlier. Why? Because the girls have to do makeup. They have to do their hair, have to make sure their costumes are ready, and then they have rehearsal, not to mention the uh, dance instructor wants to make sure the entire team is there. So two hours before each performance. Confession, it doesn't matter how many dances your girls have or when they are, just plan on spending the day at the dance venue. My wife and I would exchange texts that went something like this. Me. When's the next dance? Wife. 
Piper is up in 18 more dances. Me. About what time? Wife. 3.15, but they're running ahead. Me. When's the next one after that? Wife. Cheney goes in 24 more dances. Me. Then we're done? Wife. Awards are at 4. Then the girls need to get ready at 4.30 for their 6.30 dance. Me. What about dinner? Me. Hello? Me. I'm going to the snack bar. Wife. They went early. Did you see her? Yeah. I think that happened. I think that actually did happen where... uh, it's it's a sneaky thing. You don't uh, get many chances to leave the auditorium uh, before, especially with two girls uh, doing so many dances. And the and these girls uh, are like running backstage between dances, throwing costumes off to get into the next costume. Uh, it was definitely crazy. Number thirteen, the recital. So now we're kind of nearing the end of what I would call studio dance. And so as each year wraps up, there will be an end of the season recital. This is where the grandparents, aunts and uncles all get to come watch the girls perform. Uh, There are no judges, the girls aren't getting scores, they're just there to show you their dances and have fun. But it's competitive dance and regular dance combined, so they can be brutally long. You'll get to see all of the non competitive dances, the itty bitty girls twirling around and lots of solos. All of the girls will dance without the pressure of getting judged. We're going to, you'll take lots of photos of the girls and their friends. There will be a long awards ceremony at the end with lots of trophies and medals. Everybody gets a medal. Everybody gets a trophy. Uh, Be sure and drive the big SUV that night. You're going to need it. There will be crying especially for the seniors that will no longer be dancing at the studio. There will be fantastic senior solos you've never seen before. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't forget to take flowers for your dancers after the show. Confession, when the lights go dark and it's over, you'll realize that it's the very last, last time they'll dance for the studio. You'll get choked and you'll most likely get dust in your eye. Then you'll wish you could start all over again and you could see the girls from the beginning. And I have to admit that, uh, yeah, it was way sad when the girls both finished up um, with their regular studio dance. But uh, never fear for a true dance family on steroids like us. It did not end there. Number 14, dance is palm palm is dance. If your girls are on the competitive dance team at the studio, you might as well prepare for them to be on the middle school and high school palm squads. It's pretty much a given that talented dancers breeze through the palm tryouts. At that point, you'll need to attend all of the high school sporting events in which they palm. Most of the time, there will be a palm performance at halftime of the sporting event. For guys, for the dance dads, after that performance, it is acceptable for you to sneak out of the game. Confession, the first rule of dance dad is to know some of the terms. Dance and palm are pretty much the same thing. Palm and cheer are not the same thing. A palm squad is the dance team that supports a sports team with dance performances as opposed to a cheer squad, which is which supports a sports team by tumbling, doing stunts and performing gymnastics moves. So you got to get that right. You can't call your dance girls cheerleaders. Number 15, uh, woo pig sooner. So that is a little phrase that I came up with. Uh, If your girls get the bug and they are really talented, they may think about dancing in college. This will require them to do even more dance. There will be extra training and coaching as well as clinics at the universities. We were blessed beyond belief when Piper made Palm on the OU Palm Squad at the University of Oklahoma. And then Cheney followed up the next year by making the dance team at the University of Arkansas. Uh, So talk about a fun time for about a two-year span there. We were bouncing between Norman and Fayetteville to see games 
uh, and we had a great time. I have to say it was a fun time. I think I've got a entire blog post and podcast episode on some of the things that we encountered. There was even one Saturday where we actually uh, watched the Razorback game in the morning, drove to Norman and saw the OU game in the evening. So confession, I grew up an OSU cowboy and attended school there my junior year. To say it was tough to become an overnight Sooner fan is putting it mildly. And then on top of that, I had to cheer for the Razorbacks. You do what you have to do to support your girls. Now that OU has left the Big 12, my plan is to support both the Cowboys and the Sooners. Number 16, how I lost my dance dad status with Piper. So again, this all happened on April 21st. I was retired uh, from my dance dad status on that one day. That week was going to be Piper's very last POM event for her Uh, basically her career. She was going to be palming at a baseball game on Tuesday night. I had cleared my schedule. Um, If we had, uh, we, my partner was out of town uh, by chance, but had he been in town, we would not have podcast that night. So I could have driven down to Norman um, to see Piper palm. And this is the second phone call I got. So I'm, I'm putting these out of order. Um, So later in the day on Sunday, Piper called me really upset. Uh, I wasn't sure what was going on. I said, you know, ask her what was wrong. And she said that they were not going to get to Palm for the baseball game. And so her career was over. We weren't going to get to have the big fanfare and uh, take the pictures and say, hey, this is Piper's very last Palming event. Uh, Sounds like something like an an attorney. So, so the OU had never palmed for baseball before, so this was their first year. And when girls palm for baseball, they usually end up on the dugout doing uh, their routines on top of the dugout. Well, an attorney uh, told them they needed to cease and desist on dancing on the dugout until they could work out uh, if that was okay or not. And so Piper was crushed. I think she was more crushed by the fact that we were not going to get to see her than the fact that she wasn't going to get to do it. So, um, but we were there. We did get to celebrate her last um, time on the football field with the football team and her last basketball game. So it wasn't really uh, that big of a deal, just kind of disappointing to her. Confession, dance dads beware. One day Piper was running around in a tutu, and the next day she's graduating from college. It's been a blessing to watch her fulfill her dreams and dance for such a prestigious sports university like OU. And so uh, very proud of Piper. It was a blast. Her career kind of went as it should. And uh, we got all those special moments. She got all her senior moments. So it was uh, pretty great. So now the, uh, the second shocker, which was actually the first shocker, the first phone call I got that day, number 17, how I lost my dance dad status with Chaney. Uh, first, let me tell you the big, the big news. Uh, if you guys have followed me on this podcast and all the stories that I've told on the 70s Buzz and Buzzhead Radio about going to Arkansas and uh, becoming a Razorback and all that. Uh, the big news is the Tuckers are no longer Razorbacks. So that is the big news. I found that out on that Sunday as well. I uh, actually got a phone call from Piper after she got the phone call from Cheney. Um, within the span of that one morning and one phone call, Cheney's college palm career came to an unexpected and abrupt end. Why? You may ask, did she do something wrong? Did she break a rule? Nope. If you guys didn't know, palm and cheer girls are required to try out every year to make the same team that they've already been on. So Cheney was on the Arkansas Palm Squad for three years, had no problem making the team, and then all of a sudden on her senior year try, she got cut from the team. Um, They say her scores kept her from making the cut. And so basically, uh, as soon as that happened that morning, and then Piper's deal, uh, by the end of the day, I was no longer a dance dad. Confession. So how, uh, how does your daughter go from making every team that she's ever tried out for 
to not making it her very last year. Unfortunately for Cheney at Arkansas, her first year she had to deal with a lot of COVID stuff. Her second year, they lost uh, their coach, and so they kind of had fill-in coaches for the second year. And then for her third year, they hired a new coach, a young coach, a um, inexperienced coach. The brand-new coach uh, had no investment in the team because she had not built it, and she so much as said that. She wanted a younger team to be made up of freshmen and created one. The tryouts that they had, 17 freshman girls made the squad, while the only three girls that did not make the squad miraculously just happened to be all seniors. So three seniors did not make the team. There were other seniors and other girls that didn't even try out, if that tells you anything. And so um, this new coach... Uh, made up a team of 17 new freshmen, and a lot of those were from certain areas where she had been recruiting some of these girls. And she even recruited the judges from the same area as the girls to judge uh, the tryouts. So something a little fishy going on there. And uh, But what can you do? That, uh, I will tell you, is dance life. Number 18... There was no extra points for loyalty. So as much as we hated this, after three years of loyalty and sacrifice from Cheney, she in return received no support from the new coach. She gave up many of her sorority events due to palm activities, and she had very little time to go out and meet other girls just from the university uh, because she hung out so much with the girls on her palm team. So basically her entire identity as well as Piper's, were being on the Palm Squad. Why is all this a big deal, you might be asking? Well, it's a big deal because Cheney went to Arkansas to dance, not to go to college. Some girls go to college to get a degree, and while they're there, they decide to try out for dance. Well, Cheney, her identity as a dancer, and she was going... Um, to get a business degree to help her with doing some type of dance in the future. So everything was centered around dance. So basically getting cut from the team, she lost her identity and all of her friends. Um, And it's a little sad that cutting her before her senior year, without even thinking this new coach was eliminating her senior recognition her senior benefits, her senior awards, and all of those last moments. So basically, uh, we didn't get to remember or take pictures and say, this is Cheney's last time on the football field or on the basketball court. All of those memories, all of that stuff wiped away because of some subjective scores. Confession. Every now and then, there are things bigger than just scores. Loyalty, dedication, desire, and sacrifice should be considered a rookie coach that can't see beyond a few subjective numbers hasn't reached the status of a true coach, friend, or mentor. It'll be interesting to see if this inexperienced coach cuts one of her seniors three years from now. Honestly, I hope she doesn't, just for the sake of the girls. Let this be a reality check for any freshman dance dads out there. That's dance life. Number 19, the Tuckers are no longer Razorbacks. Not only has our daughter given three years to the University of Arkansas, but my wife and I gave three years as well. We drove three and a half hours every chance we could to go to Arkansas sporting events. We bought tickets, stayed in hotels, ate at restaurants, and felt like we were part of the community. We were looking forward to seeing her finish her senior career at Arkansas where she started. We thought we'd know when her last palm was in the stadium uh, so her sister could be there and we could all celebrate. But all these opportunities were taken away. The sense of being a loyal Razorback was stripped from our family as well as our daughter. We were already making plans for next year uh, as far as a place for her to live, her classes, tickets, parking, graduation, and other senior events. We were already starting to look into that. And uh, after this happened, I mean, within minutes, Cheney was ready to get out 
of the University of Arkansas, and we do not blame her. So Cheney is leaving the University of Arkansas. Confession. Am I going to miss driving three and a half hours across the state just to get stuck at every light in Springdale? Nope. Am I going to miss the big party on Dixon Street? Yep. Will I ever call the hogs again? Never. Am I disappointed that this didn't go as planned for my daughter? Yes, but we're going to pack her bags and head back to good old Oklahoma. Number 20, I can't believe it's over. Piper ended her career after four years at OU as planned. There were a few glitches in the beginning with COVID and a few disappointments at Nationals, but overall, she had a great career. She was Palm Captain and won the Leadership Award at her senior banquet as well as other honors. Piper took her senior photos in her palm outfits and was able to pose on the OU football field as a senior. Um, Will we ever see Piper back on the field, uh, on a college field? Uh, I have my fatherly suspicions that one day we just might, and I'm going to leave that at that. Confession, I can't believe my daughter turned me into a Sooner fan, but she did. Following Piper around the country to different sporting events was one of the best adventures ever. We got to spend time in Los Angeles, San Antonio, Orlando, Kansas City, and Dallas. It was a pleasure watching her dance every time she took the stage or the field. 21. Better opportunities ahead. The Tucker's Dance Adventure is on pause. It's not over for good just yet. Cheney is talented and has the drive to find a new dance home. She has always been a year younger than her classmates due to the fact that we bumped her up a grade in elementary school. She'll take this opportunity to sit out a year, come to Enid, do some work, and prepare for tryouts for another Division I Palm team next spring. Cheney would like to be on a team where the coach values her And um, skipping a year is going to allow her to actually graduate with the classmates that are actually her age. And so we see opportunity ahead. Confession. I'm almost relieved that Cheney got cut from this stage. It has opened the door to more opportunities than she might have had staying at Arkansas. As a sports fan, this gives Denise and I a relaxing and just watching football year. Denise held on to her OU tickets, so it'll be an easy travel year. We won't have to be at the game hours early to watch the spirit squads and the players walk to the stadium. We don't have to get seats close to the sideline just to see the girls. We won't have to wait until the game is over and the field is empty to leave the stadium. If it's hot, cold, or boring, we can just stand up and leave. Wow, that'll be uh, quite different. Number 22, I'm almost done. Poetic justice. What could be the most poetic outcome for Cheney? Well, it would be if Arkansas does not go to nationals, which is... um, would have been Cheney's last year to go because she would have been a senior and she, if they don't go. So uh, Arkansas has never gone to nationals. There's rumor that they're going to try to go this next year, but if they don't um, and Cheney would have been on the team, she would have missed out. So um, if Cheney makes a different squad, Cheney's going to only probably only going to try out for division one teams that go to nationals. So if she makes the team and makes the national squad, her dream will be fulfilled and it'll be a blessing that she did not make the Razorback squad. Cheney went to the Palm Nationals in Florida last year uh, just to watch Piper and OU perform because Arkansas didn't go. Cheney had every chance to go to Disney World with us but chose to stay at the competitions by herself just so she could watch her favorite Palm squads. She lives for dance and the studios and other teams and their choreography. She knows dance squads like guys know football teams. Confession. Was there some cosmic reason we bumped Cheney up a grade way back in elementary school? If this all plays out like it could, Cheney basically having a bonus year due to her young age, then we'll chalk it up to divine intervention. Fingers crossed. Number 23, just what if? What if, just what if Cheney tried out for and made the University of Oklahoma Palm Squad? 
She originally was going to try out for both Oklahoma and Arkansas, but she didn't want to feel like she was in her sister's shadow at OU, and she even gave up her freshman tryout at OU because she wanted to stay committed to Arkansas. Then, what if Oklahoma plays Arkansas during Cheney's senior year? Oh, talk about the plot thickening. Confession. How much fun would it be to have Cheney cheering for the Sooners ending her career on the same field as Piper? Actually, that would be pretty fun. How ironic would it be if Cheney got to go to nationals with OU like Piper did? That would be my dance dad life uh, coming to a great end. And uh, also get to go back to Disney. So I might be back. Stay tuned. Number 24, the story is to be continued. Cheney won't be able to try out for another college palm team until April of 2025. If she were to make another squad, she would start school in the fall semester of 2025. That's when my dance dad status would be reinstated. She would then possibly have the chance to go to nationals at the beginning of 2026 and graduate as a dancer in the spring of 2026. My confession... Cheney deserves a senior year in dance, and I hope she gets it. I'll update the blog post and this podcast as time goes on and we learn her fate. Thanks for reading. Hopefully a uh, dance dad in the future signing off. So there you go, you guys. That is my big news. I know some of you are rolling your eyes thinking it's not that big a deal. And uh, in the scheme of things, uh, palm teams are not that big a deal, which kind of makes you wonder why a coach wouldn't just put three seniors on the team and, uh, and just worry about them getting off, you know, a- after a year. But who knows? We don't know. Again, I think all this is going to work out, and we're actually going to, in the long run, be happy that Cheney is going to end up at another school. So that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. If you guys are dance dads out there, leave me some comments, uh, what you guys have experienced and all that good stuff. Uh, You guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to my podcast. I appreciate you guys listening, and I'm going to get out of here. See you guys.